Hi, I'm Mary Beth Quinn, and today I'm going to show you how I looked through some older work and really tried to bring some of it forward. I was going to try to use the botanical elements from those older painted pieces, tear them apart, and use them for my collage for this painting. So that's what I will be going through today, that whole process, and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm starting here with this older painting. I have really two older paintings at play in this one painting. This one is on a wood panel. It's from a number of years ago. And I've just put some absorbent ground onto the surface and only left a few little flowers peeking through. This absorbent ground I had never used before. It just puts a really absorbent surface onto the painting so when you put down really diluted paint like this it will sort of act like watercolor and soak in and leave you all those fabulous marks with movement. So I'm just getting started here putting my very first pieces of paper on here. I'm moving the, the speed of this really fast through the first part but I will slow it down a little bit later but I'm using a mixture of transparent tissue paper and also some tea bag paper, which I had tried for the very first time. That white spot in the middle bottom there, I just put a piece of white tea bag paper over that just to quiet it down. And I really like it. I like using it for that purpose. It isn't always as transparent as I want it to be because it's so absorbent. It really soaks up the pigment when I stain them. But I will definitely be experimenting more with the tea bag paper. So here's an older painting on paper that I found in a closet and I pulled it out and just started tearing it apart and decided I am going to use these flowers for collage pieces in this new work. I thought I would just clarify what the best way is to use this older work on mixed media paper and make it suitable, more suitable, to use as collage element. So I'm just going to tear it, you know, it's just that mixed media paper. I'll tear out something that I think I want to use. I like these flower formations right here. So. I'll tear that, I'll get that leaf. And then it's got this, this pretty thick backing on it that makes it suitable for mixed media and lots of water. You really could attach this onto your collage painting, but I use tissue paper for most of my collage pieces. It's very thin, very fragile looking. I really don't want big, huge, deep, edges. So I think the smart thing to do is to tear off at least some of this backing. I'm going to try to grab just the very edge of where that paint buildup is. And then I'll just pull from there. You don't have to do this part, but it does make it easier to attach to the surface, tear off as much as possible. So there, I got a good piece right there. So now it's finally, you know, as you can see, if you're gonna do this part, you just kind of have to work with it. I love working with my hands, so I don't mind it. It's, it's almost like a, it's almost calming, like a little meditation for me, but somebody else might look at this and go, ah, I just don't want to spend my time that way. Totally understandable. It really does help to remove this backing. So anyway, I think you get the idea. And now, once I get this done, this will actually be quite a thin, workable piece of collage. So here are the various pieces that I've collected from that painting on paper and I love them. I just love them. Nice and thin, 
I've got the backing all removed. And now I'm just going to start placing them on the surface and looking for a nice arrangement and composition. I really love this idea of finding my old work. Well, I love the idea of seeing my old work and actually liking it because sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes that's not the case at all. But I did love this piece and I love giving it a new life. And it's really quite symbolic because we can never move forward without developing where we are now. And I know sometimes it's really tempting to look back and and see how much you've grown and be embarrassed or wish that you'd done better work back then. But really, this is just how everyone does it. It's, it's a linear process, but there are these times I think where we can circle back and we can find, we can see how we got where we are now and it all makes sense and you just couldn't have gotten to where you are presently without going through that those stages in the past so it all serves a purpose and it all builds upon what was before it so to go back and bring some of those elements back into my present work was really just a I don't know how much I'll do this but it was a very exciting idea at the time and I quite enjoyed this process and this painting itself it really was a new development and I really do love to have each painting go into a little bit of a new territory just exploring a little bit further Now I'm quite certain that I am not the first person to do this at all, but this is the first time I've thought of it in regards to my own work in a way that made sense in the moment and was fitting to the project. So I was really happy with the amalgamy of the past and the present and had a lot of fun just seeing where it went. As you can see with this collage process, you do a lot of looking around, placing pieces next to different objects or colors, and just seeing what strikes you. I'll have a lot of people ask me, how do you make your decisions? And really, I, I don't know how to answer that except to say that I just wait for something to strike me or for an idea to spark. And a lot of that happens now because I've done it so much. It didn't used to happen at this frequency when I was a younger painter. So I really did have to just put in, in the hours. I had to put in the years. And sometimes that takes a bit of courage because you're not having, maybe early on, the ideas or the instincts or the flow that you want, but it's there. It just emerges over time. If this collage process that I'm using really interests you, I would love for you to join my class, Introduction to Collage, Learning to Paint with Paper. It's getting great reviews, people are really loving it, and I am so loving communicating with them and doing the live Q&As that are involved with the class. So I will have information about how you can find out about that at the end of the video, so keep watching. So I'm back at it and I just flipped the painting like I like to do because it gives me a new perspective. I see things. I see things that are missing or problem areas that I wasn't seeing maybe from the other vantage point. So I'm just looking for interesting places, interesting things that I can do 
like adding this stripe of yellow gold right here. And I'm also really beginning to take some tissue paper and put some over the edges of these flower pieces so they aren't so stark. Trying to blend it in a little bit more. I always try to start out with a lot going on and I have a whole stage where I'm just adding, adding elements, adding interesting uh, focal points. And then somewhere I began crossing the line into now how am I going to make this work together? How am I going to make this flow? So I think I'm definitely entering into that stage now where I'm beginning to think about making it work, taking what's there and covering up things that are catching my eye too much or in a bad way and maybe accentuating some things that, that need to be brought forward or I'm really making something sing. So there's a lot of choices at this point going on. It's more of an evaluation. I just had a short little video that I did in a live Q&A for my collage class where I talked about the generative stage of creativity and the evaluative stage. And the whole first part of this painting was the generative stage. I'm just generating stuff to work with. And now I'm going more into the evaluative stage where you begin evaluating what's going to stay, what needs to be pulled back, what needs to be pulled forward. How is it going to work together? Is it flowing enough? So I'm sort of riding the line between the two right now, but I think I'm, I'm much more in the evaluative stage at this point, trying to figure out how to make what's there already work. So it's lots of little pieces on the edges of flowers, maybe accentuating a petal or softening the edge with a piece of paper. That's what I love about this process is it's very subtle. You can make dramatic and bold colors and moves, but as you see that paper I just put down there in the bottom left, over that really dark area I put over a lighter green and it's just it just softened it up and made it so interesting and full of depth to me so i'm just looking for places to do that having just one piece of collage is really interesting but i really want maybe three or four showing through in any given place that's what really gives it that depth so now i'm just adding a little pink pink tissue paper over these small flowers. I wanted to soften them up a little bit, give them a little bit of color. And I'm, I've pulled out my tempera paint sticks again and my fluid acrylics and just adding some accent points with some paint and the tempera paint sticks, just adding some pops of color. I always know that I'm getting somewhat near the end when I start doing that because I'm picking out what needs a pop of color or just something accentuating, accenting. So now I've pulled out my Neocolor crayons that I love oh so much and I'm just making small marks, small marks that when it's hanging on the wall, you probably can't even see them. But if you get up close to this painting, there's a whole world there. Little edges to the leaves that you can study. I love that. Now I'm pulling something out of the shadows there and making a flower just, just with that crayon. That's what I love. That small line just made a flower right there. So I'm drawing in some, some leaf edges, some detail with the different crayons. 
Now here's some close-ups at this point. Now I'm really standing back and looking at this painting. I like what I see, but there are some places that bother me. I'm really wanting some quiet space in that bottom right corner. And that flower that I just pointed out that I drew a boundary around with the crayon, I really want to make that stand out a little bit. So that's what I'm after right now. This quiet space in the bottom right, and then I'm gonna work on that flower, I think next. I liked the marks that were in this bottom right corner. I think it was beautiful, but it's that it's that balance that really makes a painting work. And I'm always trying to learn more about that. Composition is really challenging for me. It always has been. And I'm getting a little bit better about seeing what the problem is or where the problems are, what I can do about them. But I've had to do lots of experimenting and lots of failing, which, you know, I really hate that word failing because it sounds so finite and negative when really I think it's just part of the process. It's trial and error. And I don't even like the word error. For that same reason it's just part of the learning process so that's what I'm doing here is attempting to find the places that just need to quiet down so other really interesting places can come to the fore and not be competed with so that's really the the main job that I have at this stage in the painting is trying to figure out what needs to be smoothed out, what needs to be quieted down, what maybe needs a pop of color. And sometimes it's not nearly as much work as you might think that there is. Sometimes you make one mark and it's like, oh my gosh, that was it. So I am in the final stages here and I'm really pleased. I love the color palette. I love how it all blends together. Here's some close-ups for you. You can see those crayon marks and how up close they really are so interesting. They're so faint and delicate. I just love them so much. So there is the finished product. It's called Summer Romance. And here it is all mocked up and in a frame. I really liked that color frame with it. So I told you I would let you know how to find out about my collage class. You can go onto my website. I will have the link in the description below and you can read all about it and I'll tell you where you can enroll. And if you would like to get on a list just to hear about any other classes I come up with, you can also find that link in the description. Well, thank you guys so much for spending time with me and I really appreciate you. You can find me on Instagram or my website.